The drug charges in Panama to Bolivia, where drugs are a way of life. That's where the pipeline to the Bay Area begins, in a culture that is tightly linked to cocaine. Tonight, Brad Willis takes us back to Bolivia for a view through the, of the U.S. through the eyes of a coca farmer. What he sees is a country supporting the drug trade, while at the same time trying to take it away. <laughs> You're looking at the remote tropics of Bolivia, where one of the most deadly crops in the world is grown. The region is called the Chapari, and the crop is coca. Meet the Calazea family, three generations working on the harvest. They are Quechua Indians, people whose ancestors were ruled by the ancient Incas. They chew these coca leaves to fight hunger and for energy while they work. Without the coca plant, they say, they would starve. Cultivating coca in our home is very important. Even though we sell it cheaply, coca helps us live. If it weren't for this crop, our children, all of us, would fall apart. These aren't the rich drug lords we typically associate with the cocaine trade. These are poor families who live in small shacks, barely scratching a living from the jungle. Their fear and anger is that their way of life is about to be crushed by the gringos to the north. To foreigners coming here is very bad. Before we lived better, but now we can't even go into the streets because of these gringos. We want them to live and get out of our country. For thousands of years, the peasants here have grown the coca plant. It's deeply woven into their history and economy. It's central to their culture, and many believe to their very survival. While cocaine is killing children in the United States, here in Chapari, the coca plant is helping to feed the children. The Bolivian Congress is now struggling with tougher laws to fight the drug lords. But these politicians know any attempt to outlaw coca farming would result in riots and chaos. Bolivian Vice President Julio Garret Ayon. We do not foresee outlawing coca production. We cannot illegalize it because coca leaves have a traditional meaning in our country. Bolivia is the poorest country in all of South America. There's great resentment here that while the drug lords thrive, the peasants suffer blame and condemnation for growing a traditional crop. We just grow it. We don't know what they do with it. The users are responsible for themselves. If they take coca away from us, how can we live? We will die. Would be better just to dig graves and throw us all inside. In many ways, these Indians too are victims of cocaine victims of the drug lords who exploit their labor in the fields and in the coca paste labs, where they're often forced to stomp leaves for days on end, up to their knees in deadly chemicals. Victims of international condemnation for a drug problem they feel is not of their own making. The consensus here is that the drug crisis in the U.S. is not their problem, that the millions of American users, not the coca farmers, are to blame. As the drug lords put it, in South America, coca is garbage. But smuggle it to the U.S., they say, and suddenly it turns to gold. In Bolivia, Brad Willis, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Tomorrow night on Eyewitness News at 6, we'll look at a drug deal Bolivian style. Growing, buying, and selling coca leaves, it is perfectly legal. It's been going on for generations. But it's the big dealers who are making the money, the ones who process the leaves into deadly and illegal cocaine. That's tomorrow night on Eyewitness News at 6. And tonight at 11 on Nightcast, we'll continue our special series on our end of the pipeline, how police are dealing with the crack crisis here in the Bay Area. You'll go out with the cops and see what they face on the streets of Oakland every night. That's on Nightcast, tonight at 11. And more goes to the 